Hello and welcome to today's video. If you are new here, please subscribe if you enjoy this video. Our videos are not a diagnosis. We are simply speaking our opinions, not facts. Situation type zero. Today we are diving back into the Amberverse. Because Amber abuses the copyright system, some clips will be heavily edited. In Amber's recent upload, I mentioned, along with many other people, how happy Amber seemed with her lipodema diagnosis. Her euphoria practically had her levitating off of the ground, and it had crossed my mind that perhaps an exorcist was going to be called. Today Amber is claiming that we are all hallucinating, so let's find out why. Okay, so I'm making like a steak stir fry, so I have some sirloin in the pot, or the pan, excuse me, and then I'm gonna add broccoli, onion, some scallions, well these scallions, these I'm gonna save raw to the end, and some zucchini, and we're also gonna use some soy sauce, some sriracha, and instead of using garlic salt, I did have it out from earlier, my meals that I had earlier, um, I'm just going to use some minced garlic. And of course at the end we're going to top it off with some sesame seeds. So here we have the meat, the veggies, and the garlic doing its thing, and I'm about to add the sriracha and soy sauce in just a couple minutes. Okay, she is complete. It smells like a hibachi restaurant in here, not going to lie. We're going to add some of the sesame seeds and some raw scallion. That looks so good. All we need is rice, but wait, I can't. Hashtag keto queen. I'm just kidding. Okay, before I make a remark on anything, please know that I am not a professional when it comes to lipodema and the diets that best work for that health issue. I did some online reading, which can only help me understand the situation a bit better, but does not mean I am well educated on the matter. What I did find online was this. Ketogenic diet can give great results for people with lipodema, but other conservative treatments are required for truly remarkable results. Red meat, bacon, sausage, white bread, citrus-based fruit, yogurt, cheese, milk, potatoes, honey, white rice, pasta, cereal, processed food or salty foods should not be consumed by someone with lipodema. Another thing I saw mentioned was that adding salt to food was a big no no. Lipodema patients may benefit from an anti-inflammatory diet. Avoid processed and pre-made foods and opt for whole food and homemade options. Avoid saturated fats and meats and have a plant-based diet with occasional lean proteins. Although Amber was making sirloin steak, which is much healthier than other meat choices, I couldn't help but notice that red meat is not suggested to best treat lipodema. Keto seems more of a suggested starting off point before the plant-based diet is introduced. So although it is good that Amber is choosing a healthier meat, it will likely not be a recommended continued choice. I also noticed the garlic salt. Adding salt to food is not recommended for someone with lipodema. Consuming a large amount of sodium often causes water retention within the body. The more salt you eat, the more fluid your body holds onto, which can make pre-existing lipodema symptoms worse. A lot of food has natural salt within it, so for someone with lipodema, natural salt intake is more than enough. I know I said I wasn't going to read comments. But here I am, I was reading comments, and as I was putting on my clothes, I got to thinking. I feel like there's been some sort of miscommunication. Seems to happen a lot. A lot of people are singing because of my last video where I'm talking about how I have lipedema, and I was like diagnosed, I seem like happy about it. Yes, that is exactly how it seemed. The joy was very obvious to see. I am not claiming that Amber is happy to have this disease. Who would be? But our girl sure did seem happy to have a reason as to why she thinks her struggles are greater. An excuse to use each time she messes up, or as she puts it, a reason. I'm not happy that I have lipedema. I'm happy that I finally have a diagnosis and a plan. I am so happy that someone listened to me, and I have so many answers answered. So many things that I've been just like, why do I lose weight like I should? Why do I eat 1800 calories and I still gain weight? Like, why does a simple car ride make me gain 6 pounds? Like, so many questions have been answered. So yeah, I'm happy about that. I'm not happy about the diagnosis. I'm not happy that I have to do low-carb keto. I'm not happy about any of that. I'm just happy I have answers and I can move on with a plan. And it's something that I've wanted for so long and I finally did it. The list of excuses she is already throwing at lipodema is impressive. Since when has Amber always eaten less than 1800 calories? This is where the blame shifting comes in. When a narcissist begins to think that someone will blame them for an action, they go into self-preservation mode and will deflect all blame from themselves. They will place the blame onto someone or something else. This is where the blame shifting happens and they duck and dive out of responsibility. Amber may have had a few days here and there when she has eaten under recommended calories, but the way she is portraying it is that she has been eating 1800 or less for the last 10 years, which is far from the truth. She overeats to an excess that shows in her size. Her weight may fluctuate due to a car ride, but if it was solely down to lipodema, then she wouldn't be the size that she is all over her body. Lipodema commonly resides in the legs, hips, and bottom area, sometimes also including the arms. Lipodema does not make everyone become Amber's size, it makes fat cling to certain areas of the body, like so. As you can see, these ladies are smaller up top. 
Many women with lipodema can be close to Amber's size, but for the weight to be all over the body, then it would more likely be due to overeating paired with lipodema. If Amber had been eating well her whole life and exercising, then she would look similar to these ladies. So I'm, I'm relieved in a way. I feel like a whole weight is off my shoulders because I have a plan. And I see a specialist who has so much knowledge over 30 years in this very subject when I thought I would find nobody. Nobody. Because lymphedema, lipedema, it's just one of those things where not a lot of doctors understand it. And even my specialist told me that. So I am relieved. That's all it is. And I just, I don't know, and people like choosing me making this as an excuse. It's not an excuse, it's a reason. It is a reason for certain areas of her body to cling onto fat tissue, yes, but it is not a reason for the binges, it is not a reason for the takeout, it is not a reason for the overeating, it is not a reason for the lack of exercise, it is not a reason for child obesity, it is not a reason for the poor food consumption. When a narcissist begins to use blame shifting, it's usually an indication that you are touching a nerve. It is used to distract attention from the truth and deflect the responsibility. It is a manipulation tactic. It can be used against the people in their life and situations that they refuse to take accountability for. I have been experiencing symptoms from lipedema and I didn't even know. I thought I was just broken. I thought I didn't know how to count calories and all this stuff. Turns out that's not true. There's actually something wrong with me and now I have a plan to fix it. I can't fully fix it, but I have a plan to work with it and I know how to live my life now around it. And I don't know, it's just like so upsetting that I open up so hard to you guys and you guys are like just reading into things wrong. And I tried my hardest to explain the best of my ability, like... I don't believe people read it wrong, myself included. Normally when someone gets a diagnosis that is awful, there is tears involved, long and hard exhales and sighs, head shaking indicating that they can't believe this is happening to them, and visual pain in their face. But our girl was very clearly excited and overjoyed to have a diagnosis that could be used as a motive to shift blame. Most people who would receive this diagnosis wouldn't crack a genuine smile for days, maybe even weeks. But our girl was beaming, grinning from ear to ear, with a very apparent glint in her eyes. Uh, there's a quote that I said where, in the video, I was like, now I have a reason, and people were like, yeah, now she has a reason to binge. What? No, now I have a reason for why I haven't been losing weight when I try and when I do things and count calories and measure my food. It's because I'm not doing it right for someone with lipedema. No, I'm not happy about it. Why would I be? Like, no, that's not a reason to binge. Like, <sighs> My binges now are like just me overeating and I still rapidly gain weight. My binges now is me ordering like let's say Olive Garden like chicken alfredo and eating the whole thing. A lot of people do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But that's my version of binging currently when my version of binging years ago was ordering three meals at once. Like... Uh... I, I hate that I have to like sit here and explain myself. There is one of the main problems right there. Amber claims to be trying to lose weight, and then will try to convince us of that by saying she is ordering takeout. Someone of Amber's size and major health issues should kiss goodbye to takeout. The very fact that she says she tries so hard, but then in the next breath openly admits to ordering, and eating utter shit, is just mind-boggling. Someone at a lesser size on a diet could probably afford a cheat day and some takeout. Takeout is harmless here and there, especially if you are at a healthy size. But for Amber to be where she is with her health and still order takeout every day, sometimes several times a day is just maddening. But it is the lipodema's fault, right? But tomorrow is my appointment and then the next day after that is my doctor appointment. Hopefully she gets my results in by then because I need to know my results. I want to know what steps I have to do further because this is, I'm 31 years old. I turned 32 in December and more than ever, I am just like, doctor, 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 appointment, appointment, appointment. Let's figure it out because the only way that you can figure it out is to get a diagnosis. And I know that's like what my channel has been about, but you guys, y'all have been telling me for years, you go to a fucking doctor. And I am, I'm doing the damn thing. Um, so just, you know, embrace it for what it is for now. You guys are watching it while I'm living it. I have my fingers crossed for Amber that her results come back with good answers. I will admit, when I looked into fluid around the lungs, it seemed rather scary, as cancer is mentioned a lot. But there is also other answers for what might be occurring. So although it may include other health issues, it still seemed to be a better answer than cancer. So I have my hopes set for our girl and will be wishing for her health and safety. So I did not document the last time I did my Lego. Lego. A lot goes on in a Lego. Lego. When I did the typewriter Lego. Lego. The person who completes a Lego. 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 There certainly is a lot going on with Amber's health at the moment. It is known that people who suffer from morbid obesity see a major decline in their health once they pass 30, so it seems to be going that way for our girl. Considering Amber has always rejected keto, my hopes are not set high. Amber would need to stick to this diet for the rest of her life in order to keep some control over her lipodema. I am not sure that is something Amber has wrapped her head around. I'm getting the impression that she thinks it won't be a forever situation type deal. But there is no cure for lipodema, so sticking to a keto diet and exercising would be a lifelong commitment she would need to stick to. We all know how much Amber struggles with sticking to a diet, so I can't imagine her sticking to a diet she doesn't even like. 
I don't expect her binges to disappear overnight, or her overeating to stop, or her ordering takeout junk to end, but she needs to change, so her bad habits need to go away. I just find it hard to imagine due to her track record. Let's hope we are all wrong, for her sake. Let's take a look at some of the comments on Amber's latest video before we leave the situation type deal. I really hope this works for her, but I will be screaming when she comes back in a few weeks saying, I told you guys keto doesn't work. I'm listening to my body and I'm counting calories now. People don't think that you're happy you have lipodema. People think you're happy that now you have a forever excuse. I wonder if she's ever going to give us an Ozem pick update. Side note, personally I think she gave that up long ago. One of the few things that could have really benefited her. Our girl got tested and went positive on lipodema. Let's be effing for real. Amber, you're relieved about your diagnosis because it gives you an excuse why your other diets failed. In reality any diet would have helped you, but when you don't see a big enough drop after being on a diet for 5 hours, you quit. I have seen so many people say she's always happy with her diagnosis. I didn't see it until now. Please don't turn this lipodema into a personality trait. Please. If you have a narcissist in your life, then please reach out to friends and family who you trust and can offer you support. Talk with professionals and do all that you can to protect your mind, body and spirit. Thanks for watching our channel. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, stay safe.